Hi, everybody. This is Robert from GHGR, the nation's podcast radio, on this Friday night. Uh, it's almost 7.30 here. Uh, weather outside the fridge and frickin' cold. Uh, I don't know what it is down in West Virginia, but we got Chris here. How are you doing, Chris? I'm doing great, Robert. How are you doing? Trying to beat the, the cold. We actually had snow yesterday uh, that came down. We had about one to two inches of snow that fell on the ground and uh, kind of made everybody a little bit uh, angry. I, I guess they're angry. Who knows? You know what I'm saying? So right. it's just it's just it's just wild, 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 wild. The weather, the wild, the virus, everything else is just going crazy. You know what I mean? I've got a friend of mine from up in Maine sent me some pictures today of their house up there, and her and her husband had all kinds of snow up in their yard. So I guess it snowed quite a few places yesterday, last night. Yeah, I think uh, hopefully we're gonna get uh, we're gonna get away from it. Uh, just had to let somebody know uh, we're live. Mm, okay. So what else has been going on during the week with you? Uh, that's about it. Just trying to confine myself. I went to Walmart the other day, <laughs> and it was so strange because you're waiting in line to get in the building because they can only allow so many people in there, oh, and then yeah. you have to wear the, then you have to wear the mask over your face or whatever. And that's right. Well, I, yeah. I've invented my own mask. It works better than those masks because they're cloth, so you can breathe through it. I just wow. take a plastic bag and put it over my head. But I don't do it very long because I get lightheaded for some reason. <laughs> Might be because you're running out of air. What do you think about that? <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, uh, up here, I don't know if we're doing that quite here yet. I haven't rode down by uh, Walmart at all to see if anything like that has actually been going on. Uh, but it, through it all, I just find it, I find it almost amazing, mind numbing to be, uh, to say the truth. I mean, it's just, it's just really, really weird how everybody is reacting to this whole pandemic and it's, it's, it's not something that people should be taking lightly. I don't think they should take it lightly. There's a lot of people out there that say that it's uh, actually a, a hoax, that it's not actually happening that it's a way for the government to actually uh, suppress it's a us. It's man. Oh, what's that? It's a conspiracy, man. Is it? <laughs> I don't think it's that. Well, I get so many messages every day, and some are from my family members, very close family members, and they're yeah. sending me all this, you know, that this is all through the, the 5G network, and this has been planned out forever, and I can't say whether it is or isn't, but some of the stuff that I get is just, it's just right down insane. I had one today saying that the virus cannot be spread without an injection. I'm like, serious? <laughs> serious? Yeah, okay. you're going to, you know, the thing about it is we're going to continue here all this BS. I'm almost positive about it. Yeah, I, I'm tired of it, to be honest with you. I really don't, really, really, really just don't care about it. You know people's opinions whatsoever. I'm I'm to the point right now. I'm just kind of numbed about it. If that makes any sense to you, so, it does. I mean, well, you just got through saying you got snow up there in Michigan. Uh, Lorraine and some of my friends up there, they they're all confined in there, and nobody's got a job right now. Hardly anyone has a job. So you got all your family together inside of one house, you know, and you're not really allowed to go outside and do much. Because didn't you tell me today about somebody getting arrested? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, people are getting, now it's getting to the point where people are being arrested for being out in public, which is actually, you know, uh, you know, it, there, it's a stay-at-home order from our governor, and uh, a lot of people are not taking it seriously. And what I mean by that is, is they're conjugating in public places like uh, going to Walmart or Home Depot and any of those other places where technically they could actually spread the virus and what they're trying to do is they're trying to stop that from actually happening which we don't want that to happen we want people yeah, to I, mean, I think about that all the time try to imagine that we finally are coming out of this it's we're now getting ready to start go back going back to work then all of a sudden the first case comes back up again could you imagine the 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 stereo that would go through people when they hear this right Right, 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 and I, I'm I'm pretty much on board with you on that. I, I think what what the one of the things that I uh, have been following, um, you know, you know that I'm working from home, and so while I'm working from home, 
I don't have anybody to talk to at work and I'm sitting in my office and I'm doing my work paperwork I'm I'm doing you know all this stuff that I need to do for work and creating uh, some um, uh, price stuff on price books and and in the meantime, I'm listening to YouTube. I'm listening to all these news channels. And I'm, it's catching my attention. But, you know, for the most part, I think, you know, uh, just to not make everything so dull, uh, I do know that things are starting to get better. And I, I, and I believe that we're going to recover from this a lot faster than what the Democrats, like today I heard one of the Democrat representatives say that they, we could be in lockdown until after January of next year. Uh, which can't happen. We can't have our country down at that, you know, with that amount of time being shut down because businesses are going to close up. People are going to be without jobs. People are going to be homeless. People are not going to be able to have money to pay. Uh, you know, like you not know, to talk- mention that the Democrats are the ones that won't pass the stimulus package for the the small businesses. Yeah, that's ridiculous. That's that's you actually know. ridiculous. You know, nobody asked for this. Nobody asked at all for no, this. No. And, and then the government had to shut us down to keep from going into the millions of losses of life. Right, right. And, and the conspiracy people out there's a lot of people actually are in some kind of conspiracy, one thing or another on this. You know, uh, right. Then why wouldn't there be? Why wouldn't there be? Think about it this way. Why isn't it that people are going to make stuff up? Like I seen a, uh, a, you know, where they're burying mass burials at, uh, in New York. Well, a lot of people have died there. Uh, if you want to know how, why is so many people, you know, you got to blame their governor. Their governor is the one that stalled and said that this is just, uh, you know, when they're uh, shutting down borders and stuff like that. This guy is up there saying, nah, it's not that big of a deal. We're not going to do anything. And now, and then when he, he doesn't have any medical supplies or anything going on, Here's what happens. So he blames the president. He blames the president because he wasn't prepared. And he's the one that turned away all the medical supplies and everything else. But you know what? None of the mainstream media is talking about that. Nobody's saying okay, anything no. about that. Well, you can get kicked off Facebook. You can get in Facebook jail by mentioning things. I have family members. My son, for example, he's in a 30-day. He just, he's always getting locked down for 30 days in Facebook jail. Uh there's certain things that they don't allow you to talk about. And primarily, if it's a lot of right-wing stuff, they don't allow it. If yeah. it's left-wing stuff, they love it. Do you know that they want to, the actual, the Democrats are going to the FCC to silence uh, Trump from his press, uh, press? I absolutely do. I absolutely do. And I hope each one of those persons that are trying to get that passed, <laughs> they put them away for life. I, I mean, I that, that's happen. a certain that's just absurd. I am an American. This is my country. I was born and raised here, and I want to hear my president tell me daily, every day. I'm sitting here at home. You know, when you watch the old TV show like the Waltons, right. what they do? They sit around the radio in a family, and they listen to radio. You know, what? That why is that such a bad thing, first of all? It's not. That's a beautiful thing that you get to be there with your family as long as you can get along with your family. Or well, it could that's do true. the opposite. I think I also think that more and more people nowadays are being at home. Uh, I actually, you know, every night at home, I can't go anywhere. So what do I do? I go golfing. I can't go to the golf course, so I go golfing on a uh, pl- on a Xbox. Uh, I play with a few of my friends. Uh, I was going to say, I don't think Wilson and your other dog going to let you do that. <laughs> they, do. they do. And, and it's Winston, not Wilson. Winston, I'm sorry. Yes, Winston. I'm sorry, Winston. Get it right, or don't say it at yeah. all. Anyway, so the thing about it is, is, is so we're playing golf, we're uh, playing other games and stuff, which I, I, I thoroughly enjoy. By the way, Grant, Keith, how you doing? Anyway, so the thing about it is, oh, and if Becca ever listens, Becca, hi. Anyway, so the thing about it is, is, is through it all, we all have these things that are going on in our lives. We're being stuck at home. Uh, Jody and me are spending a lot of time together, which, you know, they always say, be careful what you wish for. <laughs> because <laughs> uh, I'm sure <clears throat> her and I are I don't at... I think we're going to have babies named... I don't think we're going to have babies named COVID-19 or Corona. Uh, we did have Katrina's now. Right, right, right. Hey, I, I do have some good news uh, I'm going to share with you. Um, I, uh, I've known for quite a while now, 
but I think you know now that my son, Robbie, and his wife are expecting uh, a baby in That's October. Awesome. And, yeah, uh, <laughs> I'm excited. I uh, actually saw a picture of her hump for the first time today, and I was like, oh, yeah, she's really pregnant. So, uh, a picture wanna... of her... What's that? You saw a picture of her what? Her baby hump. Oh, her... okay, that's what you said. <laughs> well, I said way. bump, but I don't know what it, I don't know what to call it. What do you call it? <laughs> you can see the baby protruding from her belly just a little bit, you know. And uh, yesterday he called me up and he says, "Hey, Dad, there's something going on with my furnace. There's a loud banging noise, and I'm sitting there on Facetime trying to look at what's going on." And and so I had to kind of talk him how to pull his blower motor out. And then today. I'm sitting here with my, my tools ready to go, and he called me up, and I go, all right, I'm, on, I'm getting ready to go. And, I, and then he says, hey, I think I fixed it. And I go, oh, man. I go, here I was. I had my tool bag ready, and I was going to go see my son. And uh, he says, no, I got it fixed. And I'm like, all right. And he's laughing. You know, some, somebody out here is going to be tuning in and only getting it sporadically coming in, and they're going to hear you talk about you washed your hump. They're hearing a banging they're only gonna hear part. They're gonna think you're talking about something else here. Yeah, they might, they might, they might. But no, it's 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 really crazy. I mean, us being all in our, our homes, you know, and I don't want to say stuck, but maybe this is a good opportunity for people to really take a look at what they have in front of them, uh, to know that you know they got a beautiful home, they got you know they got food in their belly, but just to show them how ill, Ill prepared we really are for something big and catastrophic to help. Now, honestly, if the Democrats had it their way, we'd be shut down indefinitely. And basically what they would do then is we would have to count on them to support our whole livelihood. That means, uh, you'd probably people lose cell phones, probably lose their internet connections, not be able to get online and be robots because basically that's what's going to happen anyway so we don't want that to happen so but the good news is is that I think could you was, imagine you're sitting on your couch and have a home invasion somebody kicks your door in with a shotgun and they come in and they take your toilet paper and food <laughs> you had to go after the toilet paper right <laughs> <laughs> but the thing about it is is what really makes that what really what really really is got me is that uh, there's places right now where they're actually breaking into homes and taking um, the the sick kids. Like, if the kids are not sick and the parents are sick, they'll take the kids away from the home. They'll come in and they'll break down the doors and they will not give you any. And that's actually happening. I thought it was a fairy tale, but it's actually happening. They're coming in and taking the sick people out and they're quarantining these people. What are they doing with their kids? They're putting their kids in uh, in quarantines, areas where they're away from any kind of a sickness. So when was it all right for, um, you know, uh, for these agencies to come in and take your kids? Now, I, I can tell you right now that our president has no way that he's like, he's, he's the one that ordered that and there's something being done with about it. You just can't come into people's homes and take their children or take loved ones away they, from the home. They were talking about in California in certain locations. They were talking about they actually the government out there was what's the word I'm looking for. They preferred people. If you knew something, you can call in like a secret hotline and oh, give yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, maybe somebody would I'm not going to give it here on our radio show, but there's a place down in Florida. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the, the thing about it is, is, is what it all comes down to is this, is right now we're, we are in a, it's in, in a place that we've never been before, something that we have never experienced before. And it's making people upset. It's making people scared, concerned, uh, because, you know, and think about, think about it this way. Think about all those, those, uh, nurses and doctors and people who are out there, the essential workers that are out there, put you know, think think about the people in in the in our grocery stores, who are working all night to restock shelves. Trucks are running around the clock, and everything else to get food to people. Put all that into play. 
think about that. Think about the people who are risking There's their the lives, the emergency the emergency companies and stuff like that. Think about those it people. Goes right the, it goes down right down to the Pope Mill workers, Robert, because the people have to have the paper sent to the places to make the toilet paper. And you know they're selling out of as fast as it gets on the shelves. They're still doing that. Oh, they're yeah. still doing that. Oh, well, not, <laughs> not a lot of places are actually – um, having people police those areas, and they're only entitled to so many, uh, like uh, uh, so much toilet paper. The thing that's getting me is something that was brought up, is something that you had brought up early today, um, where um, five pounds of hamburgers costing up to thirty-five to forty dollars in yep. some places. Now that is, I know that that is not supposed to happen. Eight if dollars you, a dozen. Hey. If you know that any anybody that's actually doing that, you should call your state police and let them know that this is actually going on because that is not supposed to be happening. Uh, Trump signed a bill into an executive order to stop that stuff from happening, and people can get in deep, deep doo doo for that. So you know, you, you know, when I was back in, the day when I when Katrina happened, I was in Katrina. The fuel shot up. I think it was like a dollar sixty seven a gallon. I could be wrong on that. But it wasn't that much, and it shot up to three dollars and over three dollars a gallon, Thank and you. it was because. But then, when you go trying to find a hotel that you could find a hotel, they were outrageous. I mean, a little cheap fifty dollar night at the most was a hundred. I'm, I'm sorry, two hundred to two hundred fifty dollar night. Ain't that weird? How right now gas prices are in some places is below a buck, and we have a pan- and we have a pandemic going on right now. Usually, that's when the gas prices go up. I would. I would mess with people. I put it twenty five cents a gallon, but you're not allowed to go to your house. Yeah, well, that's this <clears throat> on Facebook one time. <clears throat> this one, uh, this somebody had posted, "Woohoo, gas is at a dollar thirty two a gallon. That's great. That's wonderful. But we can't go anywhere. You know? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's it's what it is. We can't go anywhere. We can't do anything. We can't do anything about it." So, you know, I've seen pickup trucks full of gas cans. I mean, you know, 10, 20 gas cans at a time, you know, one gallon, five gallon, whatever, yeah. filling them up like it's the end of the world. Well, and, the, thing and, is, the thing about that is people are, who are, uh, you know, stockpiling gas. Gas has a life expectancy. If they don't know that, they're dumb. So anyway. It's true. Yeah, life. Uh, uh, gas once it comes out of the ground, out of a gas station, life expectancy is probably it starts to diminish about a month after it's been, you know, put it into on, anything. It depends, on, it depends on the type of gas that it is. Uh, if it's for my cooking, it'll last a lot longer. <laughs> yeah. I mean, let me. You know what gets me is I have a family member that works in a refinery in Texas. And, and gasoline takes a lot more to refine than diesel. And the things that usually operate on diesel, like semis, uh, ships, things that are much larger, take a lot more fuel, less fuel you know, mileage. When I drove a semi, I was getting four to eight miles a gallon on the average, depends on my load and the elevation. Okay. So every trucker in America, and you're paying for it, it costs so much more for diesel. That's crazy. I wonder why. Well, the the thing about it is, 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 uh, why are you asking why? You know the answer to why. What does well, all I, of our trucks run on? Exactly. Okay, so why not capitalize on that? Because you're going to get more money because the food, the, everything in our lives must roll down the road. You know, there was a couple years back, you remember there was the issue with, um, how they were now using trains to transport, you know, fifty-seven foot trailers on box car, you know, on train train cars, and they were stacking those things up too high, and sometimes double by double, and they're going down, they're going down and getting three, four hundred, uh, you know, cars to a train. That's a lot. That's a lot of freight. We have a it lot is, of people. But- but from the train to the store, it has to get there some way. Right, right. And, and I'm fully aware of that. I, I understand that more than anything. I just, you know, I just, like I said before, I just try to imagine how much is actually going on right now. And think about that. How many, you know, stores are, are pushing that product out. Right? Yeah. 
I, I'm, I live within sight distance of the turnpike, the West uh-huh. Virginia turnpike. And as we're talking, I'm watching trucks one after another go up down the interstate. You know, they're still allowed to travel. Um, but God, everybody else, could you imagine? And what they're what the truck driver is seeing right now, they're listening to our shows and they're just like, it's a ghost town out there. Oh, yeah. You don't have right. people to mingle with anymore. I mean, it was difficult when I drove a truck on just eating. Imagine today, right now. Yeah, today I was actually reading an article up here in Michigan. Um, we have what's called every year the United States Coast Guard, and they've been uh, basically they have they have canceled the Spring Lake Heritage Festival, the Tulip Festival, and today I just found out that they haven't quite canceled the Coast Guard Festival yet, um, that, which is a good would, thing. What's that? That would almost cripple your town because it goes yeah. from what how many thousand to five hundred thousand. Yeah, I mean, there's tons of people. We have, like, a population of 13,000 here in Grand Haven. And during the Coast Guard Festival, it can get as much as a half a million, almost to a million people in the town. Yeah, it brings in money. But the, the fact of the matter is, is they have not chosen to cancel it yet because they're holding on with the with the understanding that this is going to pass. And you know, in in the direction, which is good. I think it's really good that they're doing this, and uh, maybe not pull the plug just yet. There's a lot of other people that have because the like, say, the Fourth of July and all this other stuff. Think about it this way: How would you like to go? You know, think about it this. Yeah, think about it this way: No Fourth of July fireworks. People are going to be stuck in their homes if if some people have their way. So we don't want that to happen. So long, long term effect, they're asking people to stop the way our civilization has been. No more handshakes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I can I can almost understand that. Um, I know that, you know, that I'm a little bit germaphobic. Um, I, I don't maybe I never told you, but I don't like to. I will. I, I, I hate. I hate I'm repulsed by touching money. I don't like to touch money. Oh, God. <laughs> I talk about this all the time. Where the money has been. Just a dollar bill. Just where think about it. Been. You you would never, never know where that money has come from. You, I mean, no way, no way you have no idea where that money came from. No. And, and not only that, I mean, just think about, you know, like people who take credit cards or something like that across the counter you know luckily we swipe our own now you know which before you used to grab the card and you'd swipe it and you'd put in the information but nowadays you know yeah you just keep your card and i'll stay a little bit clear and that's the way i like it but yeah i don't like to touch with money. technology it's changing so much i mean pretty much in the future everything's going to be more on that route of mm-hmm. it yeah. You know, I mean, even, even the men that are going to these late night strip clubs that use a butt crack and swipe your credit card. <laughs> <laughs> the girl's carrying a, 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 her cell phone and her square. And they go, <laughs> here's my tip. I'd, yeah, I mean, uh, the thing about it is, yeah, why not? Why not go that way? I mean, uh, you know, currency and everything else, is, is it's going to change. It's got to change sometime in the future. You know, there was a there was a actual um, pretty good in, uh, thing on YouTube. Uh, maybe I can uh, put this on our site. I, I actually should because it really explains a lot of crazy things. And one of the things that it's, it's oh my god, one of the things that it's actually um, explaining is what's going to happen in the near future. Where you know where is our society going to go? And the thing about it is, is if we get what we want and uh, our President Trump is, uh, you know, able to carry on, you know, with his plan, what it's going to consist of is creating more jobs here in the United States. Uh, The more jobs we create, the better our economy becomes. And that's the way we should have it. We should take care of our own medical needs, not rely on China for our, our medications, our medical equipment, and everything else. Let them do everything else. We don't care. But it it has to do with certain things. But then you find out that there are certain things in electronics and certain things 
that come from China and you can only get it in China, it kind of makes you start wondering, what, what do we need to do to make this right? You know, it's like I was talking in our last show. It'd be really nice to have one government, not a left, not a right, and keep it, you know, and, and let's let's work to survive. But when it comes all down to it, what really gets me is that, like I said before, we're living in a society where, you know, you have people who are going out of their mind crazy. Uh, you got kids who don't even know what the heck they're talking about. They're screaming at people on the streets. They're violent. The left has become violent. They're beating up people. They're throwing rocks at people. Uh, and there's been cases where they have stabbed people and, and things like that. I mean, it's ridiculous. Yeah. And, well, and a lot of it is because the prop, propaganda the news is giving on a lot of fake news, you know, and, and then you got a lot of people that just that consider themselves Democrat, but they're really not. They're a socialist. They're, they call themselves a Democrat with a socialist socialistic plan. Right. And then they try to they're, they're pretty much well buying their own media sources on what they want to say. Right. And the people that want to put the truth out there, they get banned from social sites like Facebook. You know, I'm not saying that it's a conspiracy or whatever, but it's just they're doing everything in the world they could do to shut Trump up. Just like you said a while ago, they're trying to keep him from doing his uh, presidential speeches on mm -hmm. this coronavirus. Yeah, that's not going to happen because he can he can get he can get out there uh, everywhere else. You know, I, you know, what really gets me. I, I, I always wondered, you know, it'd be really cool if 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 someone would create like Facebook, like YouTube, and have it open, meaning they're not going to choose between left or right or anything nope. like that, or censorship, nope. anything. No borders. But, it, well, it would be really uh, no borders, but what would really be nice, and I say this all the time, when Facebook came out, it was a social gathering site. To me, if I'm getting this correct, uh, that'd be like you go see Billy's first fish and caught fishing with his dad, right. or you know someone's wedding, something of your family, a bowling night together, whatever. This is what I made for dinner, but anymore it's only politics. It's only politics or coronavirus. Coronavirus. Actually, is politics. There is a way that you can stop from saying that. Really. Yeah, uh, and uh, well, all you got to do is go, when you see something you don't want, you go up in the right corner, you say you don't want to see anything with this kind of... I have it all turned off. I don't care to find any of it. I usually get all my stuff from YouTube. So my Facebook is really clamped down. Um, I don't get a lot of crap. If somebody, uh, one of my friends, is posting things, I can actually go to that friend, go above their name, and say, I don't want to see that content. I don't want to see that website. I don't want to see that page. And they can post to their heart's extent, and I won't see none of the bad stuff. Because I don't want to see it. I'm, I'm tired of seeing it. Um, I thought that meant they just sent Hillary out to kill you. Yeah, it doesn't matter. She can <laughs> come out here, but I guarantee she ain't going to last that long. You know, the thing about it is, is, is you know, we, we need to have a good time. We need to do things. It's just like, Again. you know, we need to, you know, create, we need to create our own world here. We need to create our own United States. We need to be self-sufficient. Um, you know, it, it's, it's, it's wicked. It's really getting wicked. I mean, you know, what thing I've seen lately on Facebook that has just really amazed me. A lot of people, they have uh, people that didn't even know play the guitar or sing or play a piano or uh -huh. a kazoo, whatever. But, like, you have all these quarantine karaoke type of shows. Oh, yeah, where, I'm seeing it, yeah. It, you know, I think it's amazing, you know, because that's one of the things I went to college was to be a music teacher. And now you're seeing all these people out there. It doesn't matter if you suck or you're awesome. You know, I could find entertainment by watching people just getting out there and sharing their videos. And some of these people are like, my God. Especially when you see a child that's only four or five years old sitting there just, you know, doing something amazing. Right, 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 right. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's just amazing. Amazing. It's just it's crazy is what it is. But then again, you can watch people playing like the, the a Led Zeppelin tribute with nose hairs. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I, 
it's just like the other day I was sitting in my office and I happened to uh, hear a song reminiscing and uh, I was just like God I miss that kind of music so much I do you know it's one of the reasons why I want to bring back Late Night with Robin Chris it's just because it was all about the music you know and we kept we kept it all about the music and we talked about being on the road we talked about you know all these crazy things learning about different people learning you know up and coming new artists what they're you know everything you know and, and this, so, is worldwide. this is worldwide too we had people from all around the world on that and as some amazing people you know it's just amazing the talent that have been out there but the the one thing i really liked about late night with robin chris was the the fact where we did the music trivia and we had audience <laughs> participation with that oh and my play god song. You would always your best to stump me. And one thing that I really learned about, you know, as being a songwriter, a lot of the songs have the name of the song in it, like Stairway to Heaven, for example. But don't let that fool you, because there are not very many Led Zeppelin songs that have the name in the song. You know? Well, uh, the, yeah, the, the, the thing about it was, is what we enjoyed mostly about that was the music. It was, you know, it's just like, um, I remember one time, this uh this this young girl uh, her name was Cassandra I remember her name and she won the contest Stump Chris and how we did that was is I would pick a, a song and it's time to you know Stump Chris and I'd play that song and Chris would have to not only know the name but he would have to know who sung it and I stumped you a lot and I don't care. You can you can contest it all you want, but you sometimes. Well, we did the show a lot. I mean, we were doing the show sometimes two days a week, and we did it for years. And not only that, when when they stump me, you get a twenty five dollar Applebee gift certificate. Yeah, and he and he didn't play it off either. He was actually stumped because I would pick things that nobody knew. You know, it. I'll never forget. I'll never forget I'm that voice, go. huh? I said, I'm really, really good. I'm exceptionally good at naming the tune. And and for you to stump me, he would play. I'll never forget, you played something from Super Tramp one time. Oh, yeah. And you could hear the piano. And the guitar and the piano or their style of music there is their signature. So you could pretty well name who that artist is by that. Uh-huh. But when they're singing something, you know, the mainstream, you know, FM and, and satellite stations only play the mainstream of those artists. Like, That's you know. Right. They don't play the their stuff that may be just as good. They have certain ones that are picked that's going to be their hit songs, and that's what you get to hear. And you, my friend, would play stuff I don't know if I've ever heard. And a few <laughs> of those times, and a few of those times, I actually got it right. There, very few, very few. Did you ever get it right? But uh, what? Uh, getting back to that girl, uh, she basically was when I talked to her, and I, you know, was getting her information to send her her uh, free meal at Applebee's. Um, she was on the phone with me, and she goes, you guys are like the coolest people in the world. She goes, I listen to your show. I laugh so hard. And I said, well, you know, that's kind of cool. I mean, it really was cool to hear that. Remember that time I was downtown Grand Haven, and I was talking, and this, 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 this woman turned around, and she goes, I know who you are. And I said, uh, who am I? And she goes, you're Rob. You're Robert. And I go, yeah, I'm, that's me. That's that's who I am. <laughs> and she goes, Tommy. I know that voice from anywhere. And I was like, oh, cool, cool. It Remember was that cool. time I was up there? I, mean, the, I think it was the name of the boat place up there in uh, Grand Rapids. And they recognized us, and they, they knew everything about us. I'm like, I seriously? Know, that, that was kind of cool. That was actually the first time you and I ever physically met. Yeah. Oh, that was just that was like one of those deals where you just like, dang man, like you were short. <laughs> <laughs> that was my first thought. I go, this guy, look at him. He's got little freaking chicken legs. Look at him. <laughs> and then I took you. Let's see, I took you on a tour. Oh, we went to the submarine. Remember that? Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah they were... wouldn't drive it. I was disappointed. I thought they'd let me drive it for a while. Yeah, they ain't going to let you drive that thing. That that thing's a, <laughs> a national treasure right there. 
but it was really cool to see the look on your face when you were looking at like the torpedoes and the torpedo tubes you were just like damn these things are huge and i'm like yeah yeah uh had a really good night that night um took you out for pizza and you embarrassed the hell out of us uh, <laughs> I could have, oh, you'd have no idea how bad I want to reach across that table and knock you up alongside the head. <laughs> all you had to do was order a pizza, and all you could keep on saying, this is what, ladies and gentlemen, this is Chris. So we go out to Fricano's Pizza, and he made it perfectly clear before we got there, I don't eat pork. And I'm like, okay, you don't eat pork, I get it. So we'll just order a pizza without pork. So what ended up happening, what was actually funny, is that he, we, the waitress came up, and so we were going to order three pizzas. Me and Jody get the deluxe filled with everything. And the lady goes, well, what would you like on your pizza? I don't eat pork. And she <laughs> goes, okay, I get that. And she goes, well, what would you like on it? I don't eat pork. And you kept saying it just like that. And I looked at Jody. And I go, just bring him a freaking cheese pizza, will you, please? <laughs> I was like, what the hell are you doing? To, well, exactly more, like that's the problem in the rain, man. <laughs> oh, you were, yeah. And then you had on this fluorescent green shorts and T-shirt, and I was just like, well, I understood why, because you had to dress because you were driving truck at the time. But it was just like... Man, this is how I meet this guy. You know, we, we go out to eat. We have a good time. We had a good time, though. We did have a good time. I mean, we had a couple beers. Didn't we have a couple beers? I think we had a couple beers, yeah. Yep, we had a couple beers. But it was great. I mean, it was fun. It was uh, short-lived. But, you know, I was glad to take your butt back home, but it was like... <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, then, uh, and then, of course, you got to meet... You had my door closed on my vehicle and everything before. I was like, what, Robert, what? He's already driving down the road. I thought the, I thought the funniest thing was uh, Winston. When he <laughs> plowed into you up on that couch, it's like, holy crap, he just took out my, my, my manhood. Yeah. <laughs> and I go, don't worry like about it. He's just friendly. Yeah, but I need that. I felt like, like a hundred tick on me. What's <laughs> it felt like a hundred pound tick or something. It's like attached I, to I know, I know, I know, I know. So yeah, I mean the thing about it was it was fun. It was it actually it was it was uh, it was a fun time. It was so fun, so fun. Um, but the thing about it is, is back in those days, I mean I remember us. Uh, I, you remember that time we we were doing the morning meltdown. We used to do the morning meltdown from five o'clock in the morning till ten o'clock. God. <laughs> I know That's you hate point. I enjoyed that so much. You do know I enjoyed getting your butt out of bed that early in the morning, I, right? Yep. And it was I like... Had that it, special alarm clock with those wires on it that would electrocute me to wake me up. And it was every day. Yeah. Every, every single day. And you were like, this is killing me. This is like cancer. I can't survive. I was like, oh <laughs> my God. But do you remember the story about the guy who was eating... Uh, something, and he was eating people. He was eating this guy's face. Yes, I do. Down in Florida from the bath salt. Bath salt. Yes, yes. Thank you for that. Yeah, I was just like, and we were, we were covering the story, and it was just like, oh, my God. That was, like, horrible. This guy was eating the face of another human being. And we we talked for, like, three and a half hours on that topic alone, but we had some so much fun doing it. But we were laughing so hard because who does that? <laughs> Somebody gets confused and they snort Mr. Bubble instead of bath salt. Oh my God. I, it's like, oh, people will do anything to get off or get high or any of that okay. stuff. In the, first, in the first place, I'm going to snort this. <laughs> I mean, what makes you want to snort salt? I don't know. I, I really don't know. I don't even know how anybody could actually do that. And what's that one drug where they flop around on the ground, flock or something like that? They they take it, and it, you watch these videos on YouTube. It's like that can't be real, but then you see more and more of them. They're like flopping around in a mud hole on the ground, or dude, and it just they're doing like zombie stuff. Dude, kids are eating those laundry pods, those soap yeah. pods. Can you believe hmm, that? Pods. 
What is Tide Pods? Thank you. My God. I made a video recently on that. I, <laughs> and just and some people took it serious, like well, you're going to be a bad influence on a kid. And it's like, listen, if they're bad enough to eat a Tide Pod, I might be a good influence on them. <laughs> but I took a tangerine and wrapped it up in green plastic, and it was like the proper way to eat a Tide Pod. And I put it in my mouth, chewing up a tangerine wrapped in a piece of green plastic, just making a stupid video trying to entertain people to get their mind off this coronavirus. That was, that was actually pretty stupid. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that was actually, that's one of those things that make you go, hmm, this guy ain't got all his oars in the water. <laughs> you know? <laughs> uh, it's, just, it's crazy. It's crazy. I mean, to think about it, you know, everything that we do nowadays is just one last thing. You know, I remember... Um, it's 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 really funny. Uh, we have some really close friends, and uh, every other Friday we have, basically we go over to their house. We have dinner. We watch movies. We have a couple of drinks, and uh, we go over there and we just we talk politics. We talk work. We talk all sorts of stuff. Why the girls are sitting there and they're talking about what they're talking about, but uh, we're trying to get away from doing that. But now we are actually doing this. Like last last week, we Joni and I made pizza. We brought uh, a pizza over for them. It was uncooked. They had to cook it. They gave us our drinks normally and in uh, uh, jars, canning jars, you know, glass jars. Moonshine. Yeah. You no, know, it wasn't moonshine. Uh, Jack and Coke uh, for me and uh, Bloody Mary for Jody. We went back home, turned on Skype, and we had our little week our our visitation over Skype, and it turned out great. And we're going to continue to do that, you know. And it's it's just uh, it's a good way to you know uh, distancing and stuff. But you know, we I've tried we, something like that for years where I dated these mail order girls. <laughs> you really want to go down that road? No, I'm just saying. I was, I was, I was a pioneer of that. You know, I mean, I've been doing that for a while now. I'm, yeah, you like parent, uh, you like paying those that high dollar. Like I think one you paid ten thousand dollars to and never on. got to see her. The other one you paid what was it over thirty thousand dollars in money over uh, a year, two those, years was it? Those were Facebook rumors. No, thousand. <laughs> and what did you get for it? Nothing. <laughs> You like rubbing that in. Oh, you damn right. <laughs> I was going to be serious here and talk about social distancing. <laughs> Her name was Sushi. And, I, and then here's, here's, here's the thing is I tried to tell him, and here's what he said. But we love each other. I can't, we can't live without each other. We talk all the time. They love my kids. My kids love them so much. I love her. I love her. We talk on Skype all the time. All alone, she's probably talking to about five other guys and stuff like that, and collecting this money as he goes along. And this this guy is like, but we're in love. Like, my God. And I told him, I said, okay. And then he I got me. You, was, you, she said, I love you, honey. I didn't know she was saying money. Hey, listen, listen, listen. You got to admit. Okay, so here, here it is. He got burned twice. So you would think that the third one, and I'm thinking, and he goes to me, I know what you're thinking. It's not the same. It's not ah. going to be like that. And I said, okay, uh, you know what? I'm going to let bygones be bygones. And I said, okay, I wish you the best. I mean, you went... <laughs> <laughs> This this fool went as far as going to her country, spending some time with her. <laughs> that was one of the greatest experiences of my life. <laughs> it was okay, okay. You got to go to got to go to the Philippines, but he got nothing for it. Not a thing. That's okay. <laughs> if I traded it all, I wouldn't trade it for nothing because it was an experience of my life. But I'll tell you what, when I was over in the Philippines, I got to see a culture that was not like our culture over here. And it was beautiful. I absolutely loved it. And it wasn't uh -huh. about the money. I mean, you could be the poorest person in the world and be the most beautiful person in the world. Because I had a bunch of kids. I was out there in the ocean swimming with them. And they were jumping off my back in the water. And we were laughing and playing. I don't have a clue what they were saying. 
They might be yeah. saying there's a shark ready to eat me, and they're sitting there laughing. I don't know. But we had we understood the universal language of love and laughter, and it was so beautiful. And those people over there, they could be rob. If somebody was robbing you, they're smiling and saying, th- uh, uh, "Salama." <laughs> That's what she said to you on the way out. Anyway, so the thing about it is, is yeah, it's all good experiences. I, you've learned, I think, uh, hopefully, that's never going to happen again. Uh, of course, you're kind of broke. You can't do it right now, can you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, Lord, Lord have mercy! <laughs> that was that was that was a good time. I, I think I, the funniest one was the Russian chick, though. That was the one that. I'll never, I'll never, ever, ever, because we were doing radio shows then, and, oh, the worst one, the worst humiliating one was when you proposed to one of them on the air. I, oh, you had to go there. <laughs> and, and, uh, and, and you want to hear something? Nobody listened to the entire show. <laughs> Nobody. There was not one person that listened to that whole entire show, but that was that was the time when, um, I, in in your defense, you were going through some really rough times and psychological stuff. And uh, but you know, I, I tried to keep the wheels rolling, but you know, you're back now. You're... I I asked my sister; if she'd marry me right there. <laughs> me and Mom already got a divorce, so it was clear. <laughs> okay, and she oh. said yes. As soon as as my brother got a divorce with her That's that funny. we'd get married yeah i remember one of our uh uh one of our shows that was actually pretty funny um we've had so many great ones but we've had some pretty good serious ones uh before you get into what you're getting ready to say i want to end that story real quick about my defense on that russian woman i oh. thought she I, I didn't know the i didn't know the president's name over there and she kept telling me she loved Putin. I thought, why the hell do you like gas? <laughs> That's all I had to say. That was a lie, by the way, people. <laughs> <laughs> that was a lie. That was a that lie. Was a lie. That was a lie. I was trying to be silly. Uh, but no, um, I, I think, you know, with what's going on today, I, I like the idea of um, coming back. Uh, we're actually going to be having a, a young lady. Positively Pamela is going to be um, coming. Uh, we're going to be doing a show soon. Uh, she was actually going to be here tonight. Um, I tried to get her, but she had a lot of responsibilities. Uh, she takes care of her mom and her uncle and stuff like that um, and doesn't get paid for it. I mean, she sacrificed her own family um, to come back home to take care of her mom after her sister had passed away. And she's she's definitely got some really cool things that people should hear. And uh, we're going to try to get her uh, pretty soon to come on the air. Actually, you guys know um, uh, one of the shows is Meet Positively Pamela. It was actually a very good show. We do have a video of that actually on our YouTube channel of our interview that we did together. Um, it was really cool. And she's got a lot of, lot of things uh, to talk about. Uh, kind of in your neck of the woods, Chris, um, yep. you know, and stuff like that. Not so much my kind of topic, but I'm sure that, you know, we all three can converse and stuff. But uh, I got to kind of watch it nowadays, uh, like the shows of Monster Theater and where we had, you know, the Bigfoot guy who didn't like me wanting to shoot a Bigfoot. And that was that was kind of scary in a way. But yep amazing guests on there too i mean we've had a lot of a oh. lot of authors we had a lot of authors uh oh they, what they, were, they were horrible imagine. weren't they oh they were awesome you know i didn't believe in psychics really i honestly oh. didn't believe in psychics but then some of them that got on there and they sit there and they tell you in detail stuff like how in the world would you know what color underwear i got on <laughs> i mean they tell you just off the wall oh, stuff no i actually it was um the authors who wrote books they were the worst, boringest interviews we had. But these people didn't know how to interview worth a darn. And and uh, I remember we did uh, not to say that their books weren't interesting. Don't get don't get me wrong. It's just the interview that we had 
was very, uh, very boring. But the one interview that stands out in my book, and actually I just saw a picture of the Amityville Horror House. Uh, we knew we had an interview with the original kid that grew up in that house. Yep. Um, I don't know. What's that? Quarantine. I don't know. Show. When he was reminiscing about his childhood, he went in some really dark times of his life. And he, he told us, now, first of all, when you see Amityville Horror 2, 3, 4, however many they got, those are all Hollywood. But he said the first one was exactly as it was. He said, and he lived that life. He was, he grew up in that house. You know, I, I still have him in my call list here. Uh, oh, God, Christopher St. Booth. Remember him? Yeah, he used to be, he and uh, Adrian, his brother, they were uh, the, uh, what's his name, Hugh Hefner's photographers. They did all the uh, Playboy Mansion photography stuff. Oh, then yeah. they started their own TV shows, and it's on Spook TV, which they own that on the uh, History Channel, I believe it is. That's crazy. But, you know, one thing that really amazed me about uh, Christopher St. Booth was when when Brian Adams got fired from his record label, he took his immediate place. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I'm trying to find that guy's name. Uh, what was this? Quarantino. The guy yeah. that was there. What was Christian. His? Christian, yes. He's on my Facebook friends list. Yeah, yeah. He actually, it wouldn't be bad to get him on the show again. I'd love to interview him. I talk to him all the time on Facebook. He's a great guy. Oh, yeah, yeah. I like his house back. He finally got his house back, Amityville Horror. Really? Oh, mm -hmm. that's right. He was going after that, too. I know that he had to pay a lot of money for it. I know that. So, Jesus. Well, Hollywood tried to take his house from him, and it was like, you can't take it. This is my house. And they took it for a good number of years, and it was really a... He got some people on a team together, and they fought it, and they won. They beat Hollywood. Yeah. Man. I'm looking at all the guests we have on my Skype, all the people we've had. It's amazing. Jesus. Too many people. <laughs> wow. And not, and not all the authors were boring. Now, some of them, like, I uh, can't remember what his name was. We, I think his name was John. I ask him, so John, tell me about your book. Uh, it's got pages in it. Okay, what <laughs> is it about? Well, it's about the story that the book's written on. <laughs> That's about how they went. Oh, <laughs> there was like, they were like, I remember one time I sat there and it was like an hour long. And I was like, looking at the clock, go tick, tick, tick. <laughs> And I'm listening to this person talk about their book, and I'm like, I never did learn anything about the book. He just talked about, you know, the hardest part was was well, you know, or we had we had some uh, actually artists that came on one time, and usually we, every time you interview any kind of music artist, it's 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 a crapshoot. Let's just say it that way. But if they've never done a uh, interview in their life. They don't know, they really don't know what they're doing. So what ends up happening is uh, something, something weird. And when I mean something weird, it's like, so tell me, how did you get your start in music? You know, and like Chris would say, oh, yeah, well, I, I sang and I sounded real good. I started on a one string guitar. <laughs> Oh, Lord have mercy. Yeah. But we've had a lot of really interesting ones, too. A lot of really great guests on there. And we try to weed them out when we go in there. We, you get some that... You remember the guy that was getting really mad at me because I would not come to his house right then to investigate Bigfoot. They're out there in his yard right now. Oh, yeah. You oh, know, like, yeah, that's right. I rem Oh, yeah, I remember that. We're I try to... We're doing Paul. a radio show, and he's like, "Yo, you're going to come right now." And you're like, "Dude, I'm doing a radio show." <laughs> he was getting mad because I wouldn't just get up and go, and he was like getting really, really mad at me because I wouldn't do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, so listen, here's what we're going to be doing uh, tonight. Uh, we're getting up at the top of the hour right now. We're going to be uh, opening up the phone lines real soon. I'll give you the number here in just a few moments, and uh, if you want to call in too and talk to us on the air, you're more than welcome to. Uh, uh, 
you, we can only take one person at a time. We're not going to take multiple people. We're not doing that game anymore. And so we just want to kind of open up the phone lines here pretty quick. I think, it's there. I think it's posted on the wall for the phone number where you can find it. No. I don't think I have put it up there yet. No, I haven't. No. Nope. So you can't lie to me. So well, I thought seen after what is the number? Oh, the number to call in is 616-422-7143. Number to call in is 616-422-7143. Uh, just remember to keep the, you know, keep it. Well, that was a little quick. I don't know if I want to answer that one yet. Well, hello, this is Robert. You're the famous guy. You're going to have to speak into your mic a little bit more. Uh, I can barely hear you. I'm out you. in the cow field with a cow right now. i got my arm stuck inside of it. She's getting ready to give a calf. I can't. i got my arm stuck up a cootie of a cow. Oh, well, can you uh, talk into your mic a little bit better? Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you. Barely, but I can hear you. i got my arm stuck in the cootie of a cow. It's giving birth, but... I got your number on here. I got you on speed dial because I had your number from last time when you came down here to Texas. Remember, we were going to do that radio show with me on it? Is this Tex? Tex, yeah. It's me. I'm Tex. Oh, my God. Uh, I thought you, I thought I got rid of you. Hey, Tex, what have you been up to? Hey, is that that Chris Allen feller? Well, yeah, it's me. What, what have you been up to, buddy? Well, you hear, man, you got a pretty mouth. That's that's weird. I don't know what to say, Robert. Uh, so, Tex, hey, what you... Listen, listen, I got a question. I was on one of your shows up there talking about spook farts. Remember that? <laughs> yeah, how could I forget? Yes. We still got them up here. They're, they're worse now than they've been in a long time. We got a lot of ghosts and a lot of spooks up here going around farting on people. And I don't know what to do about it. And I try to send it to that... Uh, uh, what was his name? Uh, Summers. Summers. And, and Casey. Phil? Something. Phil Summers. Phil Summers and Casey. And Ryan Casey, yes, yes. Ryan, that's it. I sent them some spook fart. What did they ever find out about it? I, I couldn't tell you. I really couldn't tell you. But other than that, so how have you been doing? How, what are you thinking about this uh, virus that's been going around? Man, I'm on unemployment. You remember I had my own taxidermy from Roadkill? Yeah. I can't do nothing. I can't get unemployment from it either. Why not? I don't know. It's, they, they don't have no, They don't even know what I'm talking about. They're like, sir, you got to have a job, a real job. And like, look at here. I stuff animals for a living. <laughs> and he does too, but he does. He doesn't. He doesn't clean them out. He just stuffs them with toilet paper. Well, you know, for the longest period of time, you can squeeze them, and it's like liquid rice comes out of them. And you can make all kinds of stuff out of them wild farmers up there. I made you when you came down to see me in Texas that time. Uh, what was it? An uh, armadillo, I believe it was. Yep. Yep, yep. A beer, yep. It was a beer opener. <laughs> you, you do realize that I never got to have that. I never got to take it home on a plane. It was dead, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, it was dead, but it, it was a dead carcass. They're not going to let me have it on a plane. Well, I could have made them one, too. Why not? You're going to have to talk to them about it. I have no idea. I just can't believe that you're still alive. <laughs> Tex, I think it's because there's laws and regulations. You're not allowed to have stuff like that, buddy, on an airplane. I don't know, but I think that's what it is. You might want to check in the rules and regulation. Well, I had to look that stuff up there, feller. Uh, I made Robert that thing. It was my favorite armadillo. I'll never forget it. It was hit by a pickup truck, sucked up by a tornado, and slammed into a cow, and it was perfectly <laughs> preserved. Holy crap. <laughs> you imagine you're out there just forging around, you're just a typical armadillo, and all of a sudden you get sucked up in a twister, and you get slammed into a cow. That's crazy. It was like a cannonball when it hit that cow. Oh, my Lord. Oh, my Lord. So, hey, uh, so are you uh, are you following the left, or are you on the right this time? I, I stay right in the middle. I'm, I'm right in the center of the trailer park. <laughs> <laughs> You're such a good goon. Anyway, I meant. So, what do you think about uh, what do you think about Donald Trump? I think he's got a real pretty mouth. I, he's got a real.
real pretty mouth. I like the way he talks. <laughs> so who are you? Are you supporting him to be the president then, or do you think that he's doing a good well, job? The only one left, he's the only one left running. Hillary's done killed everybody. <laughs> Why do you say that? Well, they're dead. <laughs> I'm going to stuff them. <laughs> oh, Lord have mercy. This guy hasn't changed a bit, has he, Chris? Not a bit. I don't even know what to say. I'm sitting here just, I got my head shaking like, oh, my God. He's just, he, he's cool. <laughs> I mean, he, he, I could see him actually stuffing that armadillo for you. Oh, it was horrible. It was horrible. I, it was, uh, Chris Allen Beller, let me tell you something. I, was, I stuffed you a rattlesnake, but so, it wasn't always dead. It crawled off or something made it. I'm not sure. But I told Robert to put it on that plane and take it with you, and I left its fangs in it for you because, I mean, yeah, I... I I just thought you'd like it. We had fangs. I think you said you were married to something like that once before. Well, I, uh, uh, we don't want to talk about that right now. But, yeah, they, they, they probably have rules and regulations about taking venomous animals on an airplane, too, I oh would think. God. Yes, I remember that. Do you? Uh, this guy This guy is like, uh, he's he's crazy is what he is. He's, so, Tex, tell me about what, what is your prediction for uh, the – coronavirus well i was reading this thing about this really wise feller called nostril nose not nostradamus uh, something nostril head uh uh nostradamus nostradamus and he said that we're going to have a president in the twin years so that that would have to be 2020 and we're going to have something that's going to be really really bad coming around town and it's like well it couldn't be my girlfriend and it couldn't be my wife i'm not sure which one that would be so it had to be a virus, and they're going to have a virus going around town that's going to hurt a lot of people. And everything he's been saying is pretty true. And everybody in my, my trailer park is scared to death to come out right now. We don't even go outside in the yard and drink beer anymore. Wow. 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 That's, uh, okay, so you, you do know this has nothing to do with beer, though, right? No, that's why they call it a coronavirus, because it's got beer in it. And they, what they do, they mix up the beer, and they let it sit in like a stump or something, and it makes you have an allergic reaction to it. I was reading that on the, the CNN the other day. <laughs> Touche. Anyway. <laughs> this guy has not changed a bit. So, uh, how many wives you got now there, Tex? I only got one wife and two girlfriends, and, they're, and they like each other finally. We really? finally get along. Well, they're kin to each other, yeah. What happened to Tammy? She ran off with some salesman selling vacuum cleaner. You talk about that sucked? She ran off and left me for a vacuum cleaner salesman. Do they still have vacuum cleaner salesmen? I don't know, but they were sucking going down the road. Somebody told me. <laughs> oh, I remember her. I remember her. You had a fun day with her. She got your tattoo on her. That was Linda. Linda got your tattoo on her. That was that time when somebody, we were getting, uh, when you first started making me real famous out there, we did the radio show live in the trailer park, uh -huh. and somebody mooned me out there, and I pulled my wiener out and wiggled at her. I was like, fella, let me show you something. You ain't going to disrespect me in my trailer park. Uh, were you I in the... Robert, I remember that was, <laughs> he did. I know, I know. I damn well did. I ain't no... Feller? Uh, no, but the thing about it was, is I'm not sure you were living in a trailer park at that time. What happened to your land? Well, my land got seized by the bank. They said because it had somebody else's name on the title, and it didn't have my name on the title. It's like but that feller gave it to me, and they tried to tell me it just didn't work like that. And it's like it damn well did. <laughs> and how long did you live there? Well, they came up telling me about taxes. It's like, look, when I got this, I had to pay $10.50 taxes. They, they didn't even know what I was talking about. I didn't get no paper on it or something. I trusted <laughs> the fellow with tax. Bought him beer with it. Yeah, yeah. I remember that. I remember you uh, You were complaining. I got 25 acres for less than $250. And uh, it took you 10 years to pay it off, right? Well, yeah, but, I mean, it, it had a gas tank on it. It had some business on it. They had to move all that stuff out. I came in there all the time, acting like I own that restaurant and the business. And I even told them that. I guess they thought I was joking. <laughs> they oh. tried to throw me out of there one day. It's like, Feller, you know who I am? I 
own this. I own the property you own. So what happened? See, I remember when you got uh, arrested and you called us uh, from the jailhouse. And uh, I don't know why you did that. But you got arrested for peeing on a cop car. Well, well I didn't know it was below. I was peeing from a rooftop. And I didn't know I was over top the police station when I broke out. And there, I was peeing, and the wind just carried I, I sprinkled a couple feller officers down there. I'm sorry. They almost shot me over that. Uh, uh, you are always a treat. You are always a treat. So what well, do you think What do you think about uh, us being gone for so long? I, I mean, I haven't talked to you in about four years, Tex. I, I'm still giving autographs out every once in a while. I got. I make people. I hold them down and make them listen to that program because I got it recorded on an eight track cassette. And they eight, listen to it. How did you record it on an eight? Oh, okay. Never mind. Well, I, I took a dead squirrel and I had a wrap. So I use his testicles for the antenna. It goes right <laughs> up the tail. And it, you got to move the tail around because, like, if a storm's coming in, you wiggle it that way. If a storm's going away, you got to wiggle it that way. It worked out pretty good. So I, here I am with my mechanical eight track cassette squirrel antenna on that because i can get am fm and a track cassette with it and <laughs> i'll make people i'll make them listen to it there's people i ain't got time for that and i'll sit there at gunpoint and hold them down it's like damn it you're gonna listen to me on this radio because i'm famous <laughs> people will never forget you for that no 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 one will ever forget you tex not at all i know that when i was there you terrified the crap out of me i mean the things you were doing i never seen a man i warned you i warned you <laughs> <laughs> I know. That guy was nuts. Uh, oh, I... I ain't that bad, fella. Really. I mean, I, I, I had some rough times, so I got to admit that. Like that time they came and repossessed my truck, that was pretty bad. You know, but it had a built-in swimming pool. I got that idea off of YouTube from watching one of your shows. <laughs> so he puts the blame on us. Oh, my Lord. Uh, I don't know well, what I'm going to... That one fella up here, Chris Allen, they had them people up there called um, uh, Wild Wonderful something in West Virginia talk about them people up there in that one town, and they were jumping off a roof, landing in the back of a pickup dump truck or something. It's like, man, I got to make me one of them. So I took uh. a big old piece of plastic from uh, that store that Chris loves up there, Lowe's, and I made me a pool in back of my truck, and it was so cool. <laughs> I would say I love Lowe's here, Texas. Me and Lowe's had a fallout, so... Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're not going to go down that road. He's talking about Buck Wild, Robert. He's talking about Buck Wild. Oh, oh, oh okay. Yeah, that's what it was. It was called that Buck Wild show. Uh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, that was a pretty stupid show. So, all right. Well, hey, Tex, it was good talking to you. Uh, uh, maybe you can call in again sometime, and and uh, would love to hear from you. you get, take care of yourself, and be good, all right? You're welcome, man. Hey, Chris Allen, can I come up here and live with you for a little while? I mean, it probably wouldn't be more than a month or two. Uh, well, I got a full house right now, Tex, and we've got that coronavirus lockdown, so they wouldn't even let you into West Virginia right now, buddy. Oh, man, come on. I, I can sneak up there. They never know I'm coming there. I don't mind a bit, and I'll be very entertaining, and I, I won't have sex with your animals. I, I, we better pass on that right now, Tex, right? But we'll talk about it in the near future, buddy. Thanks for coming on the show tonight. Hey, buddy, you're welcome anytime. I, I'm glad to come in there. Hey, Robert, you get back out here in Texas and keep my legacy going, buddy. All right. We'll, we'll see about that when this thing gets over with, all right? All right. You got it. Thank you, buddy. Hey, thanks, everybody, for listening to me. And listen, so I don't have to come and hold you down. If you're down in Texas, you, if you can find me down there. I'm going to get one of them things. They got this stuff called Internet. And I'm gonna get me to have Robert make a website with my website on there, and I'll sell everything. You could, if, there, if you bring your own animal that's dead, or a, a relative, or husband, or wife, and I'll stuff it for you, and we'll make something out of it. And I don't charge that much, but you got to bring your own toilet paper. Oh Lord. Okay. All right. Thanks for you. We'll we'll get we'll get together. All right. All right. Good night, guys. Yep. Bye. Good night, Dex. Oh Lord, have mercy. That guy's a tool. <laughs> I'll never forget that time you're down there in Texas with him and all the stuff that you had to go through. He was like constantly touching the knobs on your mixer. Oh, I know, I know. He even broke it. That he he just he couldn't he the guy he, has the attention span of a gnat. 
He pawned it at the pawn shop. You loaned him some equipment to start his own radio show just to see where it would go. Oh, I remember. Fun of we, and, we know, and he pawned it. He did. He pawned it for... What, what did he... Oh, man. We'd have to go back and listen to what he pawned it for. It wasn't much, but you had, to, you had to pay for it. You got it out of the pawn shop for him or whatever. I mean... I was telling you, I'd, I, maybe I shouldn't, because he might still be listening, but I, I was saying you ought to arrest him. Nah, I would never arrest Tex. No. I was kind of being quiet saying that. This guy is the ugliest freaking Texan I've ever seen in my life. I mean, the guy has absolutely, he has a mullet, right? He has the hair coming down the side. But if he takes off his hat, he's a chrome dome, man. He has absolutely no hair up on top. Actually, I thought, look, when I seen the pictures that you sent back in that one, he looked like it was somebody standing the the back in the seventies with Leonard Skinner. <laughs> I wouldn't even give him that much credit. Come on, <laughs> well, I, I was back in the seventies, so you got to age him a little bit and then make him ball headed, kind of like Gallagher. <laughs> oh, oh, and it was horrible. I mean, he was so sincere about that on Riddell. I mean, he he doesn't he gets him and then he takes he takes some toilet paper and he stuffs it in the mouth until he can't stuff it no more, and then he stuffs toilet paper up the other hole until he can't push it no more. And it was just, it was like, and he wanted to give this to me to bring back to Michigan. I had to take a flight. There was no way, no way I was going to get on a flight. I remember he said on the radio, on that radio program, when you, when you ask or somebody, a caller or somebody asked how he did it and he would leave it out in the sun for like a month or something. I don't remember exactly how long he said he did, but he, Left it out there, and he was talking about the the maggots that would in, they would he called it liquid rice. <laughs> I remember that now. He probably ate it. <laughs> uh, where do we get these people, right? I don't even know where he came from. I just like, <laughs> oh man, man, I man. Candy or I thought maybe it's candy or something. <laughs> no. So uh, anyway, let's 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 get on, let's get on with this. So. So how how's things been happening down there in West Virginia since the last time we had the show? What's been going on? A little bit more dust uh, dust landed on my table. That's about it. <laughs> <laughs> that, that one author that you're talking about might be actually very exciting right now. Oh <laughs> yeah, I know, no doubt, no doubt. I mean, it's it's been pretty slow. I mean, uh, this week um, I got a lot of stuff done. Uh, what I needed to get done, stuff that I ouch. Stuff that I've been behind on. And uh, so uh, I do have something I want to share with you guys. So, um, so here's the deal. Um, as we get older, uh, people, us, we get older, we tend to uh, do things that are not that healthy. And sometimes we get stuff stuck in our brains that, you know, we're, we're destined destined to like croak or something like that uh because some of us don't like going to doctors every year and getting a checkup every year and you know paying these doctors to go test after test just to find out that you're healthy but this year this year has been kind of a uh a fun year for me um i <laughs> played a lot more golf oh don't yawn you make me yawn Anyway, we played a lot more golf, and uh, and uh, I made some really good friends. And then uh, Robert, I wasn't uh, doing what you said. I was actually choking because I just got a text message that came through from Tex, and he was talking about he was writing, he was going to write books on wise. On how does what, I can't make out what he's saying, but it's something about he wants to write a book that about wise sayings from him being a wise person. And the book was called "I Am Right, You Are Wrong." Uh, um, I'm I'm not seeing it being an Amazon top seller, but you never know. I think I'm gonna have to change the call in number again. Could you imagine putting him if they put him on that show? View the view. <laughs> <laughs> that would be good. That would be good. So oh, good. anyway, can I finish my story? Sorry, yes, I was just got interrupted by a text message. That... Yeah. Well. Okay. So anyway, uh, I I got injured uh, in the fall, and uh, I had to go to the hospital, and because uh, I thought I was dying, I 
Dude, I, 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 to this day, I think maybe even, you know, it, I had the same sy symptoms as the, uh, the COVID-19 in October. And, but it was a virus I had. I know uh, all three of us, three of us guys got it out of four. And, uh, what was, uh, what was, uh, really weird is, is, um, I went to the doctor and, and they took all, they took a ton of tests. And I mean, I was, I was banged up pretty heavy. Um, when I mean banged up pretty heavy, I was, I was banged up. Um, and, uh, they took blood. I mean, tons of blood from me. And uh, throughout the day, they they ran every test to find out what was actually going on with me. And they found out that my blood sugar was a little bit high. Um, not extremely high, but high enough to be of concern. So basically, um, I t it turned out to be type 2 diabetic. And I, uh, the doctor gave me a lot of choices. And he says, uh, the first choice is, you know, you can take medication, you can take insulin, um, you can, you know, do all these medical stuff, or you can just change your whole lifestyle. So what I did was, is I changed my lifestyle. I wasn't about to, you know, go on insulin, take medication. If I could beat it, what was it that was holding me back and what it turned out to be was I needed to lose some weight so what I started doing is I started exercising and when I mean exercising I started walking um I'd get on a treadmill walk for 15 minutes and then at night I'd walk for 15 20 minutes and then gradually every day I would increase my time on the treadmill uh, eliminated a lot of dairy from my diet, uh, started eating a lot of proper foods, and lo and behold, I started to feel better. I started to sleep better. I started to not have aches and pains in my body anymore. And for quite a while, I was wondering if it was really sincere that it was because I changed my diet was it because I changed my diet? Was it because I changed everything about me? Was that really what was actually causing me to feel better? I didn't know for sure. So what I did is I stopped doing what I was doing. And sure enough, after a while, my aches and pains started coming back. I started not feeling well, you know, like tired. I didn't sleep well at night. And so it's the truth. Um, I, you can beat this. And so I'm getting ready to start over again. And this time my goal is to lose 60 pounds, um, which is going to put me at a good, I'm not going to tell you what it is, but that's my goal. Actually, my goal is to lose 53 pounds is, and why it's an odd number. But if anybody out there is a uh, type 2 diabetic, um, you can beat diabetes. It, it can actually be beat. Um, I actually read an article one time online, and I'm going to actually be sharing this very soon with you guys. Um, did you fall down or what? No, I had a spring clip that popped out. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so... Uh, I'm going to be sharing this uh, because I really believe that, um, you know, our doctors are out there doing the best that they can. And but honestly, I think what's happening is uh, they're um, really, really not giving us all the facts. And especially if you're diabetic, um, you can beat it. You it means you can beat it. You can be not diabetic anymore. And it well, all you know, go ahead. Okay, you got good doctors and bad doctors. I just want to iterate that because they're not all for your best interest, I believe. Well, no, no, you're. Well, you know, I don't really want to say it that way, though. I don't either, but I'm saying some of them want you to just keep coming back, and sometimes they'll get you on a medication that makes you addicted, and then they'll put you on a medication that gets you off that addiction that makes you addicted to that medication. Uh huh. Yeah, and the thing about it is, is what really got me was, uh, is I, I used myself as a test subject because I wanted I wanted to 
I really wanted to beat this and I'm going to beat it and I'm going to, and I'm going to bring it and I'm going to tell people that it's something that you can beat. It's all about really, to be honest with you, it's, here's the biggest thing. It's really about what you eat is the most important part. That's, um, that's you said, you nailed it right there. Yeah, it's not it's not that you have to do a lot of exercise, but you should get up and you should walk. Um, I got to the point where I was doing, um, oh God, up to I, I can't even remember ten thousand steps in a day, um, which was amazing, and that was my goal every day is to to at least reach that. And it wasn't as bad as you think it is. I mean, if you can get on a treadmill, here's what happens to people. I've noticed this greatly is you get on the treadmill, you walk, you want to do this, you want to do this, and you do it every single day and it becomes boring. And when it becomes boring, you lose interest and then you lose motivation. What's that? I said, this is true. I just watched a video a little while ago on a guy that invented the most exciting treadmill. And it's a YouTube video. Since you like to watch YouTube, he took a Briggs and Stratton, like a five or six horsepower motor. He put it on the back of a treadmill with wheels underneath it, and he was driving it going down the road while he was treadmilling. Oh, yeah. I've seen, actually, they, they have the treadmills that are bikes that you can actually walk, and, and you can, it, it's just like riding a bike, but it goes down the road. But anyway, so the thing about it was, is, is what I learned is I want to kind of give this to people. And I, I, look, I'm not no doctor or anything like that, but I know that this is actual stuff that works. It's all about the willpower. And if you don't have the willpower to do it, it's just like a person who smokes. Yeah. Trying to get a person to quit smoking and, and take that uh, person to quit eating the junk food, it's hard. But I, I'm going to say this honest to God. If you change your diet and just eliminate the stuff, okay, basically what they say is make a list of all the stuff that you know that is good for you. And, and basically, salads, fruits, vegetables, um, you can eat meats. Um, you, the only meat that they caution you to stay away from is beef. Because beef takes a little bit more to digest. It doesn't mean you have to give it up forever. It just means during this time. And what I learned was, is by eliminating beef, eliminating all the junk foods and stuff like that, uh, and when I meant junk food, so I ended up eating salads, vegetables, fruits, lots of fruits and vegetables, uh, chicken. Um, I could have pizza, believe it or not, but you want the thin crust. You don't want to eat white bread. You want to eat whole grain breads. Not a big deal. You can eat eggs. Eggs are good for you. But the one ingredient that I took every day that kept my blood levels down was I took cinnamon. Cinnamon will lower your blood sugar greatly. I drink cinnamon coffee every day, seven days a week. Um, and when I make my coffee, I use 9.5 pH water. Nine point, the higher you know, pH that you have in your water up to a certain limit is actually good for your body because everything that you eat lowers it below the 7.0. Uh, your water and your food, like you said a while ago, those are the key ingredients as to it. But what you said a while ago about your beef, what's important is to watch your protein levels because a lot of people will go on a high protein diet, and that's what brings your cancer receptors on. Well, that's the, that. Yeah, I was trying to get to that. Um, yeah, I mean the thing about it is, is there's certain things that you can eat that have protein. That, they have the good proteins and they have the bad proteins. That's what I was told. Um, and uh, the book that I got about this is it was an amazing an amazing book and i read it from front to back and i learned a lot and i learned that i i was the only reason why i was skeptical of it uh i guess the reason why i was is because it seemed too easy that if i can do this and i can maintain it which is what i'm doing is, is once i start maintaining it and everything keeps functioning and working the way that I want it to you can beat this and I was doing it it was actually better I was actually feeling better I was actually doing more active things and I was losing weight 
and I lost like a lot of weight and I gained I actually gained eight pounds back uh, since I went on a diet in November okay um, they probably know is you have a goal that you're after and folks his goal that he he told me he wanted to be a Chippendale <laughs> no not really but anyway <laughs> um one of the things that I learned was is don't set your expectations unrealistically and that actually came from a nutritionist she told me she says so what would you like what is your goal here and i said well i'd like to lose some weight well what how much do you want to weigh and i said well i'd I'd like to get down to 230 pounds would be great and she goes but is that don't you think that's a little excessive and i'd say i mean it's a lot of weight to lose but look you know, I lost X nine 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 like this before, and she says, "Yeah, but this is different. Before you lost all that weight because you were working and it, you didn't change a whole lot of what you were eating. You changed your diet, but what was the goal then?" And I said, "Just to lose the weight." And she says, "Right now you're trying to lose the weight, but you're doing it for a goal." I I couldn't understand what she was talking about. I was like, well, "What do you?" what are you talking about and this is what she said she says if you set your goal too high you will never accomplish it and i said okay so what would you recommend she goes i can't recommend this for you she says this is what you need to decide for yourself so i said she goes how many pounds do you want to lose and i go i don't know and she goes what where would you like to be on the scale how much would you like to weigh and then i told her what would be comfortable what would i be happy with and she goes let's reach that goal first don't worry about how much and then the other thing she told me is i go god you know i just i hate getting on the scale every day no don't get on the scale every day do your routine. Do your thing. Get on the scale you, maybe once a week. If that, you know, every two weeks. Did you know I'm a weight specialist? Of course. I'm, I'm, no, I'm serious. I'm, I'm a weight specialist. Like right now, I'm waiting on my stimulus, waiting on unemployment. <laughs> I'm, I'm you, you, on got me. you got me on that one. You did. <laughs> you got me. So anyway, um, yeah, I, I, I feel like sometimes, you know, this is something that I want to, I want to share with people and I, and I really do want to share it with people, uh, and it's going to be fun. So anyway, so I want to talk about what's in the future for GHTR and what we're working on right now. And, uh, I think Chris will be able to help with this. Um, what we are planning to do is we're going to end up bringing Late Night with Robin Chris back. We haven't set the date yet. It's probably going to be off a little bit more, but I do plan on bringing it back. And we are going to be bringing back Monster Theater. And uh, we I have a big surprise for everybody. Uh, Ryan Casey is going to be coming back um, to our uh, radio station. He's been doing some streaming right now, and he's really good at it. And... Uh, He's doing really well um, uh, since the last time we talked to him. Uh, he's uh, kind of built quite the family. <laughs> I mean... Um, what do you mean he's built the family? I mean, he's he's got girls now. He's got kids. And he's 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 a, he, he's a, he's a, he's a, um, a father. He's a family man now. <laughs> Congratulations, Ryan. I always like Ryan. He's a great guy. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, we're going to be bringing him back. And... Uh, it's it's gonna be fun, so uh, yeah. I mean, a lot of great things coming up. Uh, just uh, a few uh, little tidbits out there. Um, if uh, you want to check out Grand Haven, go to www.surfgrandhaven.com. It's one of our sponsors out there who uh, helps us to keep the stuff going. You can view the webcam at any time and get out there and do your thing. Uh, I don't know what it's gonna be like this summer, but. It looks like you might be looking at the the uh, the, <laughs> yeah. the lake from uh, a webcam. And the I other thing, go ahead. I remember, the, I remember when you put the camera out there, up there in Grand Haven. Yeah. You had you could now, folks. You could watch this out there year round because I've looked on the the video before, and you can see there's a pier out there that freezes over. 
Yeah, have you seen the pier since they put up the lights? They finished the renovation of the of the pier. I didn't. I didn't. That's surfgrandhaven.com? Yep. Yep. You can go to the live webcam, and now you can see the, the pier at night all lit up. Um, actually, we're gonna. I'm going to be doing some drone footage uh, for Surf Grand Haven coming up soon. Uh, I'm going to be flying at night, uh, get some aerial shots of it all lit up at night, which I'm actually looking very forward to. Yeah, that's uh, cool. Yeah. I like to see that. Yeah, and uh, yeah, they turned on the lights. We were actually there when they turned out the turned on the lights. Actually, there's a video on our uh, YouTube channel of the lights turning on. Uh, something that everybody would like to share. So, all right, we're going to be ending the show a little bit early today. So, uh, Chris, you got anything you want to say to people before we uh, sign off tonight? No, I'm just looking forward to the shows that we got coming back up late night with Rob and Chris. Uh-huh. And the guests we had on that, and the Monster Theater, because to me, you know, I, I love getting out, looking for the unknown and what's out there in the world, the ghosts and things. And I got to go out and do a lot of uh, these ghost paranormal type of hunts. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah, amazing. Uh, uh, I'm yawning. Uh, I should have slept a little bit better last night. But anyway, all right, man, we'll talk to you guys later. Y'all have a wonderful evening. Uh, thanks for listening. If uh, you want to drop us a line, you can drop a, lo- a line to us at host at ghtalkradio.com. Send us an email. Go to our website. Make sure that you uh, like all the articles that we got there. Share it with all your friends and family. Uh, we will be coming back soon. We're going to be having an a interview with Positively Pamela, where she's going to discuss some uh, really cool things. And we're going to have a special guest on her show that is a remarkable person from what i've heard this guy is definitely a genius and we want to hear what he has to say so again you guys take care of yourself have a wonderful evening and god bless good night everyone